Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a weird thing that I'm doing. This is completely unscripted. I just wanted to shout out this game against the storm because I have barely seen anybody covering it. Um, for those who do not know anything about this game, which is probably most of you, this is a roguelike city builder game. So the gist of it is you're making settlements on your way to these objectives. You've got these seals here that have to be um, dealt with. Like the, the premise of the game is that like there's an eternal storm and it sucks and there's this big storm that happens. Um, you've got this timer down here until what do they call it i think they call it the blight storm happens and like the map gets reset but you're basically like starting a village over and over and over and along the way you get upgrades that hopefully make that easier so this is the upgrade tree if we, I don't know, look at this, like you get modifiers for more resources. Um, there's a timer when you are building a settlement uh, called the Queen's Impatience. You can get that to slow down um, the rate that it accumulates. Things like that. So let's start a settlement. Um, I've already done that. I'm making my way to the Silver Seal here, because that's one that I have not done. So, I've already had one settlement here in this cycle. And this is the range, like, where these, where these arrows are going. That's the range at which I can embark and make a new settlement. Um, there are... A few different biomes here, uh, woodlands, the marshlands, coral forest, scarlet orchard. Um, they all have different stuff in them, like different resources and such. Let's go scarlet orchard. And so, um, you can choose sort of which kind of settlers you want to go with you. Uh, let's be weird and go all lizards. Um, there are four different species in the game currently. They all have different needs that need to be met, and they have different things that they're good at. Lizards like to work in hot environments. Um, they eat meat. Um, they like meat pies, jerky, that sort of thing. So that's like the advanced food that you have to create. Let's see. And each biome has its own modifiers. So the Scarlet Orchards thing is there are um, ancient ruins that you can uncover. That's like a side objective sort of thing. Uh, difficulty. Pioneer is kind of like normal-ish, I guess. Veteran... I would consider, like, once you know what you're really doing in the game, this is the difficulty that you're at, but mostly I've been sticking around Pioneer. Um, because Veteran introduces new mechanics called Blight Rot that, like, destroy your buildings over time if you don't take care of it. And I'm terrified of that, so I'm not doing that yet. Um, and I have... Embarkation points. I've got nine total. This is a bonus. Normally I would just have five. But I... My previous settlement um, was next to some extra modifiers on the world map. And those got me extra embarkation points. So... I get to choose some stuff to take. I want extra... Nah, nah I don't.
Okay. These are like basic materials, coal. Um, I just want that so my hearth can use the coal. It's much more efficient. I'll get I'll get to what the hearth is here in a second. All right. So, this is the game map. You've got your main warehouse here, which is where your supplies are going to be stored. And then you have the ancient hearth, which is a vital building that you have to maintain, so it's constantly consuming fuel. You've got basic fuel like wood, but more advanced stuff like oil, uh, sea marrow is something that you can collect from resource nodes, or coal, which is what I prefer to use. Coal, if you have um, the right buildings, you can just make that over time and it's a very efficient fuel like one coal is 43 seconds of burn time and the game when it plays uh counts down like in-game seconds which at normal speed is like one to one to real world seconds i tend to play at 1.5 times speed but that's how that works um at the beginning of a settlement, you can choose buildings. These are randomized. So... I don't know exactly what kind of resources I'm going to have access to. So I'm going to make some safe choices here. So lumber mill, that's going to be very useful. Planks are used for a lot. And each of these have... Uh, different star ratings here. That's basically how efficient this building is at making these things. So like, the clothier, very good at making coats. Uh, doesn't take very much fabric at all to make coats. Um, not very efficient at water skins and scrolls. Let's... Uh, kind of want a bakery, but I don't know. I've been I've been screwed out of getting farms before and that really hurts this whole process with uh, making advanced foods. Mm. And you don't have to make choices immediately. I do have berry bushes. So you can put off making choices like this. Um, there are other things similar to this that you can, like, put off. So you can kind of wait and see, like, how things are going to pan out before committing to anything. Hmm. Now yeah, let's go with the bakery. All right. So... First things first. I like to put a path in front of my warehouse because villagers are going to be traveling along this quite often uh, to deposit resources and to get res resources. Let's see. One of the first things that you should definitely do Get a woodcutter's camp. These are absolutely vital. I'm just surrounded by dangerous glades. This is fun. We'll put that right there. Um, oh yeah, these trees here. So, you get wood from trees, obviously, but... Depending on the biome, you also get bonus resources, and you can see the percentages there. So we've got like a 60% chance of extra wood, or 10% chance of copper, 5% for pigment, 5% uh, for fibers. Just depends on the biome. Sometimes it's very beneficial for getting other things. Sometimes it kind of gets in the way of getting wood, which is just a vital resource in general. 
Let's see. I want to... Let's set up my roads first. I like to have production buildings as close to the main warehouse as possible. But I also need shelters. People need places to live. Unfortunately. Let's see, that should be more than enough. Man, I only have lizards. Well, yeah, I didn't take the extra villagers embarkation bonus. Of course I only have lizards. Assign some lizards to the woodcutter's camp. You can tell the woodcutter's camp to do specific things, like avoiding glades here, or only doing marked trees. So you can mark trees to prioritize them. All right, got our first cornerstone. So, oh, this is really good. So cornerstones are like power-ups that you get throughout the game. Um, so you can see what they do. Um, these are okay. This, the clay delivery line, this just gives you a basic resource, like at a fixed interval. And that is incredibly good. I don't have access to clay right now, but I'm just going to take that. Worst case scenario, I am surrounded by clay and I can just turn those into bricks and sell them if I want to. But anyway, so these glades here, we don't know what's in them. Uh, the ones without any symbols here, these could just be just basic resource nodes here. But you want to cut your way through them to get to dangerous glades. Uh, these have an event that you have to work on. Um, otherwise, bad things happen. <clears throat> the forbidden glades here are just more extreme versions of a dangerous glade. Um, with much harder objectives to do, but they give better rewards if you complete them. And then also we have Queen, uh, Queen's Orders. So these are objectives that you can do at pretty much any time. Um, you can see the rewards that they give and the objectives. Um... This isn't particularly hard, but this is easier to do. And it gives you Queen's Grace. So Queen's Grace is how you win. So you have to fill up this bar and max it out in order to win this settlement. Or if the Queen's Impatience, which increases over time, if that maxes out, then you just fail. Which, failure is not a big deal, really. Um, it is a roguelike, so you still get, like, experience out of it. That you can then, you know, go back to the Smoldering City and turn that into, like, an upgrade that will help you on a future settlement. But the goal is to max this out. Um, there are many different ways to do that, keeping your villagers happy. Like, the lizards have this uh, blue effect around them. And that generates reputation points, which is good for this. And resolve also is a thing that you have to manage. As time goes on, the forest gets more hostile. So, like, cutting down trees, in particular, uh, increases forest hostility. And that decreases resolve. Uh, if this gets below zero for anybody, then people start leaving the settlement, which is bad. You kind of need people to work 
and do stuff. Speaking of working and doing stuff. Read field. Harvesters can't. Can't do that right now. Yeah, I just desperately need wood. But back to these orders. So this is just objectively better rewards here. However, it requires uh, packs of crops and completing a trade route. I am not equipped for that at all. Delivering 35 wood is much easier. So I'm going to select that. The next one... Selling goods, deliver for amber. Amber is money, basically. These are decent rewards. <clears throat> These are okay rewards. This is easier to do. I'm going to pick that. My style is I just try to pick things that I know are easier to, ac to accomplish, so I get those points. Mm. Ooh, but this is also very good. These are very good rewards here, but no, I'm definitely not going to get this done anytime soon. You know what? I will pick that one. I can probably get this done later. But it'll it'll be some time. Ooh, I discovered a glade. Here's a cache. I can break it open to get the stuff inside, or I can send it back to the citadel and get a little bit of reputation of money out of it. It's just a crate of clay. I'm going to leave this alone. Like, it won't go anywhere. It will just stay there. So, once I get the tools to send this back to the Citadel, then I can I can just do that. Like, it's not going anywhere at all. Okay. I have four people not really doing anything. Let's do the herbalist camp. Put some people to work. But anyway. That's that's basically it. Like you're you're doing you're doing this multiple times. And I've, I've heard it described as like playing the first hour of a city builder, just over and over again. And saying that out loud, like it sounds like it kind of sucks, but it really isn't. It, it's very, very addicting. I've, I've had just a lot of time put into, the, into this game. This is like my comfort game right now, even though it does get very difficult later on. Um, man, I just, I just really like it. It just, it scratches an itch for me. The thing that I mentally compare it to is Civilization, even though Civ is nothing like this game in many ways. In, in almost every way, honestly. But in terms of, like, building out your town, or, in Civ's case, building out your empire, right? You're making, like, tactical decisions, right? So, what buildings do I want to place down here? Or what resources do I want to exploit over here? Yeah, I can make that wood delivery. There we go. We got some humans. And I need to make some more 
housing for them. While I'm at it, build some parks to level up my hearth. That gives me bonuses. Very important. Oop. Yeah, sure. Put the humans in the harvester's camp. Oh. And these little blue ticks down here, as you get more reputation points, you get to choose a blueprint. Which... Uh, smokehouse for jerky? Yeah. I need that. That's gonna be good for lizards. Need fabric for that. So... I need to make a crude workstation. So I can start making some of those basic building materials. So planks, fabric, bricks, they, they're used for uh, advanced production buildings. Um, so I mean, you've got, you've got a pipeline, right? So wood gets turned into planks, fiber or reeds or leather gets turned into fabric, stone and clay, they get turned into bricks. Uh, copper bars, crystallized dew, turns into pipes, which you can use to uh, make rain engines, which make production facilities more efficient, or have other bonuses. And also, uh, there are three different cycles to the storm here. I'm going to unassign my woodcutters here. Uh, during the storm, season woodcutters produce extra hostility so to minimize that I just unassign woodcutters which right now is not great actually let, let me let me reassign them my hostility is not very high So you can see you can see all of your modifiers here. So like villagers, how many glades are open? Um, how many years it's been uh, contributes to your hostility. Things like hearths or uh, higher queen's impatience, funnily enough, uh, contributes to reducing hostility. Ooh, another blueprint. Ugh. I don't know if I like any of these. I get one reroll. Mm. Uh. Weaver's pretty good. We'll do that. But yeah, this this game really scratches an itch, like for real. Like it's this is a very very well made game, and I don't I don't see it getting the attention that it deserves. So yeah, again. Just real, this is a real quick and dirty video for me. Um, I'm not super good at the, uh, the whole unscripted thing. But I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this. I hope you guys check out Against the Storm. More importantly, this is a fantastic game. And I'm going to get uh, started on a much more structured video now. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.